Number one gives us a polynomial function and then one of its known factors. And it would like us to rewrite the function as a product of linear factors. So this is a linear factor where it's just x to the first power. It doesn't have anything higher than a degree one. And so what we're going to do is divide this into this polynomial. And when we divide an x cubed by an x, we'll get down to a quadratic or an x squared function that then we'll be able to um, probably factor from there. So let's draw in um, this box. And then we'll get two rows because we're going to do, it's going to divide by an x minus 4 factor. So I'm going to put the x minus 4 on the side here. And um, then put this first leading term of your polynomial in this first box. So this x cubed will go here. And now we're going to kind of work the multiplication backwards. So this times this will equal x cubed. So what times x gives us x cubed? So x times x squared gives us x cubed. And then we'll take the x squared times the negative 4 to fill in this box as negative 4x squared. So now we can take a look at this one. And this one will be like terms. These will both be x squareds. And they need to total this. So they need to match this polynomial. So negative 4 plus what gives us negative 3? So that's plus 1x squared. And then that will help us fill in now this box, okay? Because what times x gives us 1x squared? Well, that's x. x times x gives us x squared. Then we're able to fill in this box. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. And then we can fill in the like term. So we know this is an x and this is an x. And they have to total negative 10x. So negative 4 plus negative 6x. So negative 4x and negative 6x gives us that negative 10x. And then we can figure out this one. So this will be negative 6 because negative 6 times x gives us the negative 6x. And then negative 6 times negative 4 is positive 24, which matches this. So we have a remainder of 0. Okay, which means that's good because it's a factor. It should have a remainder of zero. It should divide nicely into there. So now what we have or what we know is we have this x minus 4 factor times this x squared plus x minus 6 equals this original p of x. So this times this gives us our original polynomial. So now what we'll do is factor this quadratic. So we see this, we just want to factor it. So we know that if the a value is 1, okay, so this kind of lead number here is 1, that it's going to be just an x times an x, okay, because x times x will give us that x squared. And then we just need the factors of this negative 6 that add to positive 1 right here. So we need two numbers that multiply to negative 6, and add to positive 1. So 3 and negative 2. So this will be plus 3 and minus 2. So that's our factored version. So that's our product of linear factors. Then it wants us to just do a rough sketch of the graph of this function. Okay, so we'll just sketch out some axes here. Um, we're able to find the intercepts, okay? So our intercepts are, if we set these equal to zero, so we would add four to both sides, so four is a zero. We would set this equal to zero and subtract three. We would set this equal to zero and add two. So here are our intercepts at one, two, three, four, and then um, negative three. And then we know it's crossing way up here at 24. So it's crossing somewhere like way up here. Okay, if I just count, let's just say that this is 10. Then this would be 20. So it's crossing somewhere like there. And then our leading term um, is x cubed. 
So this is a positive odd degree. So we know it's going to be doing something like this, down on this side, up on this side. So then we can just start down. Okay, go up through this intercept, back down through the x-intercept, and then back up. So it's down on the left, up on the right, goes through each of those intercepts. So there would be a rough sketch. Number two, Tyler thinks he knows one of the linear factors of P of X. After finding that P of one equals zero, he suspects X minus one is a factor of P of X. Here's a diagram he made to check if he's right, but he set it up incorrectly. What went wrong? So knowing that when we plug an X value in, it equals zero does tell us that that X is a zero. So X equals one is a zero which means that X minus one is a factor, right? Because it's gonna be the opposite of that when we bring it back over, okay? So then this is the factor. So Tyler actually divided in X plus one. He should have divided in X minus one. That was the only thing that he did wrong. Number three, the polynomial function 2X to the fourth minus 9X cubed minus 12X squared plus 29X plus 30 has known factors of x minus two and x plus one, which expression represents q of x as a product of linear factors. So let's practice um, dividing these factors in. Okay, so we're gonna start with dividing in x minus two into our function. So we put the x minus two on the side here, and then we start with this leading term of two x to the fourth, so then we can fill in this box. Oops, let me go like this. So we can fill in um, this first box because this times x gives us 2x to the fourth. So 2 times x to the third multiplied by x will give us 2x to the fourth. So then 2x cubed times negative 2 gives us negative 2x to the third. Then we know that this box and this one are our x cubed terms. They need to total nine, negative 9x cubed. So this would have to be negative 5x cubed because negative 5 and negative 4 gives us that negative 9. Now we're able to fill in this box. So negative 5x squared times x gives us negative 5x cubed. Negative 5x times negative 2 gives us 10x squared. That will help us find our x squared term. So this x squared plus 10x squared needs to give us negative 12. So 10x squared plus negative 22x squared will get us down to negative 12x squared. So then negative 22x times x will give us negative 22x squared. Negative 22x times negative 2 is positive 44x. And then 44x, okay, is a like term with this, and it needs to give us 29x. So this is going to need to be negative 15x in this box because 44 minus 15 gives us that 29. And then negative 15 times x gives us negative 15x. And negative 15 times negative 2 gives us positive 30, which matches that final term. So then we now need to take our new polynomial, that blue one, okay, and we need to divide in our next factor. So now we're going to divide in the x plus 1. Okay, so we're going to put x plus 1 here, and we're going to be dividing this into this factor. So we're going to put that leading term of 2x cubed here, and then we're just going to kind of fill it in. So now we know 2x squared times x gives us 2x cubed. X squared times 2x squared times 1 gives us 2x squared. Then we need to do this term plus this term gives us this negative 5x squared. So this needs to be negative 7x squared because negative 7 and 2 gives us that negative 5. 
So then negative 7x times x gives us negative 7x squared. And then negative 7x times 1 is negative 7x. So then we'll figure out the like term with the x. So negative 7x and what gives us negative 22x? So that's going to be negative 15x. And then negative 15 times x gives me negative 15x. And negative 15 times 1 gives me negative 15, which matches this. So we're good. So what we've done here is we've now said that 2x squared minus 7x minus 15 times each of these factors, x plus 1 and x minus 2, is equivalent to our original. Okay, and so we can see that they already have the x plus 1 um, x minus 2 factors in every answer, right? So they've already got these in every answer. So now we're trying to take this um, quadratic here and factor it to see which of these it matches, okay? So you can either actually factor it down, okay, using the box method or however you factor, or you can kind of check each of these middle terms, okay? So we see that the 2x squared happens every time, but we could just check these middle terms of 2x times 3, which is 6x, and then negative 5 times x is negative 5x. So 6x minus 5x does not give us this negative 7x, so a is wrong. Then we could do that again, 2x, um, whoops, 2x times negative 5 gives us negative 10x. And then 3 times x gives us 3x. That totals negative 7x, which is what we're looking for. Okay, so this is going to be our answer. And then you could look at these other ones too, but 2x and negative 1 is negative 2x and 15x. That's 13x. That's not what we wanted. Here it would have been positive 2x and negative 15x, which would be negative 13x, not what we wanted. So you can kind of use multiple strategies to figure that out. Number four, each year a certain amount of money is deposited into an account which pays an annual interest rate R, so that at the end of each year, the balance in the account is multiplied by the growth factor, which we're calling X, um, which is one plus the rate. So $1,000 is deposited at the start of the first year, an additional $300 is deposited at the start of the next year, and then $500 at the start of the following year. Write an expression for the value of the account at the end of three years in terms of the growth factor. So we know that we started with $1,000. So after three years, that $1,000 has been in there three times. Well, three years. So it's going to need to be multiplied by the growth factor three times. So x times x times x, which is x cubed. Then we deposited um, $300 the next year. So this $300 has only been in for two years. So this is going to be multiplied by the growth factor twice. And then the next year we put $500 in. So after three years, 500 has only been in there one year. So that would be multiplied by the growth factor once. Now part B wants us to determine the amount in the account at the end of three years if the interest rate is 4%. So remember X is equaling the growth factor of one plus the rate. And remember that the rate is 4%, but when we're putting it into an equation, we need it as a decimal, and 4% is 0 0.04. So x is equal to 1.04 when we add that together. So we're going to be doing 1,000 times 1.04 to the third, plus 300 times 1.04 to the second, plus 500 times 1.04. And if you type this um, into your calculator correctly, you should end up with $1,969.34 at the end of three years. 
Number five, um, state the degree and the end behavior of f of x. So you wanna look for the highest degree exponent. So we see that here. So here's our leading term. So the degree on this is three because it's the highest exponent that's there. Then the leading coefficient um, in this case is four, which is positive. And we have the degree, which is odd. So we know that this one's gonna be down on the left and up on the right. So for the end behavior, Okay, that's going to say as x gets larger and larger positive, f of x is also going to get larger and larger positive. As x gets larger and larger negative, f of x is also going to get larger and larger negative. So remember... The x's, when they're large positive, we're talking about the right side of the graph. So way over here on the right, what is the function doing? When it's getting larger and larger positive, that means it's going up. So this is saying on the right side, it's up. And as x gets larger and larger negative, that's talking about the left side of the graph. The function is getting larger and larger negative, meaning your function is going down. So on the left, it's going down. On the right, it's going up. Number six then wants us to describe the end behavior of this function, so similar thing. So we're just gonna look for the highest degree. So we see this negative two x to the fifth. So our degree is five. And then our leading coefficient is negative two. So that's a negative leading term with an odd degree. So now as x gets larger um, and larger positive, f of x is gonna do the opposite. So f of x is gonna get larger and larger negative. And as x gets larger and larger negative, f of x is gonna do the opposite and it's gonna get larger and larger positive. So that's gonna look like this where it's up on the left and down on the right. So if we kind of talk this through again, when the x's are getting really big, positive, that's the right side of the graph, f of x is going down. So on the right side of the graph, the, the arrow is pointing down. And when the x's are really big negative, that's the left side, f of x is going up or getting larger positive. So on the left, it's up. On the right, it's down. All right, then number seven, what are the points of intersection between the graphs of f of x and g of x? So when we have intersections, intersections are where our functions are equal to each other. So where does f of x equal g of x? So we'll just set these two functions equal to each other. And um, in one of these that we did in a previous video, we noticed that they had common factors. And in this case, they don't. So this is a plus three and a minus three, a minus one and a plus one. So instead of getting them on the same side right away, we're gonna expand them, meaning we're gonna multiply them out. So let's take and multiply x times x, which is x squared. Then we're gonna get a negative one x and a plus three x which gives us plus two x. And then three times negative one is negative three. X times x gives us x squared. Then we're gonna get a negative three x and a plus one x, that's negative two x. One times negative three is negative three. So now we're gonna wanna start trying to get our like variables on the same side. So I'm gonna subtract an x squared here, and I'm gonna do it on both sides. And x squared minus x squared is zero, so we're gonna get two x minus three equals x squared minus x squared is zero. So we're gonna be left with negative two x minus three. Um, and then we can add two x to both sides to get our x's together. 
2x plus 2x is 4x. And then we still have the minus 3 equals. Negative 2x plus 2x is 0, so we have minus 3 over there. So let me just rewrite this. 4x minus 3 equals negative 3. So then let's get our constants together and let's add 3. So then you get 4x equals, okay, that's 0. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So then when we divide by 4, we get x equals 0. So when x equals 0, our functions are going to equal each other. So now we just need to plug it in to one of these functions to figure out what goes with it. So we can do g of 0. Um, and you can do f of 0 if you want to. I'm just doing g of 0. So we'll do 0 plus 1, which is 1. And then 0 minus 3, which is negative 3. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. So this ordered pair, 0, negative 3, is the intersection. And you maybe could have noticed that right here um, at this stage. So let me, oops, let me move um, these kind of off of here. If we just go back and look at um, this part, you might notice that these both had a constant term of negative 3. So that means that our y-intercept is the same in both cases. That's the point 0, negative 3. So that's kind of what we're seeing um, be the intersection point there. So you might have seen it a little bit earlier.